Okay, <coughs> good morning. <coughs> uh, so um, in the last class, we are showing how to calculate the uh, space vector and how to uh, determine the time instance. So uh, let us just show you the picture of the space vector one more time. Uh, this is the space, uh, the hexagon is the outer boundary of the space vector. Uh, green is the <coughs> trajectory of the space vector if it has not produced any undesirable harmonics, <coughs> undesirable low frequency harmonics. That is the green is the trajectory of that space vector and it is the maximum possible space vector that it can uh, produce for a given DC bus voltage. So we calculated uh, from 415 volt 50 hertz input uh, what is likely to be the DC bus voltage under continuous conduction mode of diode. And we know that formula from our uh, power electronics class is that 1.35 into V in line to line RMS. So the line to line voltage is 415 volt. So therefore the VDC voltage, the DC bus voltage will be 560 volts. So from this 560 volts, the modulation scheme of the inverter will produce AC voltage at the motor terminal. And the modulation scheme, if it is sine, uh, sine triangle modulation, we will see that the corresponding uh, voltage is written in a red color that is 343 volts. Okay, how do we get it? I'm again reminding you, how do we get it? The, we get it this way that per phase voltage uh, peak will be VDC by 2. That is the starting point. Per phase voltage is VDC by 2 is the, uh, uh, is the per phase voltage of, in this case. So uh, uh, VDC by 2 implies that uh, 560 by 2. So per phase voltage is uh, 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 VDC by 2 is that 560 divided by 2. So this is the 280 volt is the uh, peak value of the sinusoidal voltage. So divided by root 2 will give me the RMS value that is 197.98 volt is the RMS value of the per phase voltage. Now uh, line to line voltage is then into root over of 3. So that becomes 342.9 volts right. This is how the uh, sine triangle voltage is um, uh, the RMS value of the uh, line to line voltage that you can produce if you use sine triangle modulation. The reason for the uh, of this um, of this kind of voltage uh, or of the uh, of the voltage that is much much less compared to the input AC voltage input AC voltage was 415 was that because we have done the uh, harmonic elimination and the spectrum of the uh, voltage uh, in the low frequency zone has reduced and spectrum of the voltage in the high in the switching frequency zone has increased uh, so uh, so this has got distributed in a different way and this distribution has produced lesser amount of fundamental voltage right and uh, to remind you that what it means in the uh, what it means in the uh, space vector plane this uh, this uh, 343 volt of line to line voltage is that we equ equate it in this way. We equate uh, uh, if if we now know the value of the phase voltage, uh, peak value of the phase voltage, then into root into 3 by 2 is the value of this phase vector, right? Uh, uh, which is um, which is a circle, the trajectory of which is a circle, and the circle's radius is given by uh, whatever the peak value of the uh, sinusoidal AC voltage into 3 by 2. So in this case, it will be VDC by 2 is the phase voltage. As we have seen, VDC by 2 is the phase voltage into 3 by 2. So which is equal to 3 by 4 VDC. So 3 by 4 into 560. So that is 420 volts. So the circle will have uh, a radius of 420 volts uh, representing the sine triangle modulation generated uh, space vector voltage, right? Whereas the true space vector modulation scheme, uh, 
uh, which uh, happens to inject the third harmonic component in a natural manner and extend therefore the circle and that circle is uh, the radius of the circle and the radius of the circle is shown here by the green line. Uh, you can see that uh, that amount of voltage is equal to um, uh, is equal to uh, how do we get it that is uh, that is equal to 485 volt. How do we get it? We get it this way. The maximum possible space vector, which are the vertices of the of the hexagon, uh, vertices of the hexagon, each one has a magnitude of VDC. So the maximum magnitude of the maximum value of the uh, of the sinusoidal voltage um, that can be produced uh, by sine triangle by, by by the space vector modulation is represented uh, by the uh, by uh, VDC into root three by two because that is the that is the radius maximum value of the maximum radius uh, that uh, a circle can be inscribed inside this hexagon. Uh, if I inscribe a circle, its radius uh, would be the maximum value of this radius would be this VDC into root three by two, that sine sixty degree that uh, that blue line that is it, that is what it is in, in, indicating that is VDC into root three by two but that is the peak. Uh, so if you uh, convert it into um, uh, uh, convert it into line to line voltage, then it will boil down to be equal to uh, 300 and uh, uh, how much is that uh, into 1.35, 395 volts. So it will mean that it will be because the uh, maximum value of space vector modulation is has become 485 volt. And then you would make it equivalent. Uh, you divide it by um, uh, um, uh, two by three to get the fundamental, uh, the phase voltage. Multiply by root three to get the uh, RMA uh, to, to get the line to line, and divide it by root two to get the uh, line to line RMS. So this way we can go from anywhere to anywhere. Anywhere to anywhere we can go by looking at the picture. I repeat by looking at the hexagon. The value of the uh, the vertices from the center, uh, the distance of the vertices from the center is VDC, and the maximum value of the radius of the circle that can be inscribed inside it is VDC into root three by two by geometry. You can see sine sixty degree, sine uh, sine uh, sixty degree, right? So uh, it is that. Uh, so the, what is that representing? It is representing the space vector. What is the relationship between space vector voltage and the phase voltage? It is related by three by two factor. So that voltage divided by uh, that voltage divided by three by two, I get the peak value of the phase voltage uh, produced by the space vector modulation. How do I get line to line voltage? I get I multiply it by root three. How do I get the RMS value? I divide it by root two. So this way, if you relate it, you will get a voltage of 395 volt uh, in the uh, in the line two. Uh, in the line to line voltage and that is the maximum possible and this maximum possible voltage when do we get it when we run it at the base frequency of the machine when do we what is the base frequency of the machine? that is the rated rated frequency of the machine that is the data sheets frequency <clears throat> and that is 50 hertz so we get we, we will run it at uh, at 50 hertz 50 hertz we will run the machine as uh, uh, 395 volt RMS RMS line to line line to line line to line voltage. This is what will be running. We didn't get 450 volt, but we got somewhat close to that. So it is starting from 560 volt DC bus, which is obtained by uh, by rectification of 415 volt AC input. That is what is uh, with conduct continuous conduction mode, and then this is the 495 volt uh, 50 hertz uh, we can um, produce at the uh, at the uh, motor terminals line to line voltage at the motor terminals we can produce right. <coughs> now we, our our cases now have to be thought of how do we get any other voltage any other voltage how do we get it is very easy because. Uh, it is just going for not the maximum possible circle, 
uh, maximum possible circle that we can inscribe. Let us say if the maximum possible circle we can inscribe is this, then we will now have to go for any other circle which is uh, which is inside. Which is inside. Let us say this is the circle. I didn't good do it good job uh, because this is not centered properly. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, let me do a little better job. Okay, so this is the next level of uh, next level of uh, thing we want to do. This is the maximum possible maximum maximal possible value of output voltage at 50 hertz. And this is an intermediate voltage. Into this may be, let us say, uh, uh, um, space vector. Space vector for uh, any other uh, frequency. Let us say 20 hertz. Right. So how much is the thing we are creating here? We are creating here. We have seen that. Um, uh, we had created a space vector of radius how much? Uh, how much was the radius? The red one, red one radius was how much? Red one was, uh, uh, we wrote it earlier, how much was the radius? Uh, that was, okay. how much was the radius? That was, uh, that was uh, 5 DC bus, 560 into root 3 by 2 that was the radius so it was how much 560 into into root over of 3 divided by 2 so it was 485 volt that was the radius and now what radius we want we want two fifth of it because it is v by f right this is v by f so v by f will say that that we need two fifth value of the radius so we need a space vector which is 2 by 5 of 485 volt. So how much is that? Uh, into 2 divided by 5. That is the space vector we want to produce. 194 volt approximately. So this is the space vector we want to produce and, and we want to produce note that it is uh, this one cycle is one cycle of 20 hertz right in the green. Okay. So uh, and the other one is um, um, is uh, one cycle is one cycle of uh, one cycle of 50 hertz waveform, right? Uh, so this difference is there. They are not at the same frequency. This is representing a frequency of 20 hertz, this circle, right? And the other one is representing a frequency of 50 hertz, right? Right? Uh, for example, if I take every switching problem, let us fix the switching period. If the fix the switching period to be equal to uh, 100 microsecond, right? 100 microsecond. So for 20 hertz, uh, how many <coughs> how many um, uh, calculations we have to do in to complete one cycle? So that is 20 hertz is corresponding to how much? That is 20 hertz corresponds to 50 millisecond. So 50 millisecond divided by 100 hertz, 50 millisecond x minus 3 divided by 100 hertz, <coughs> 100 microsecond, sorry. So we have to do 500 calculations, 500 steps for what? To corresponds to 360 degree, one cycle, 360 degree is one cycle. So every incremental theta, <coughs> that is equal to 360 divided by 500. That is equal to theta, small theta, every incremental theta. Let's call it delta theta. That is incremental theta. So how much is it angle wise? That is 360 divided by 500, right? So that is 0 0.72 degrees. You understand, I guess. That means first is, let us say, this is, this is theta is equal to theta is equal to 0, then uh, next theta, uh, theta first sample, theta, uh, theta, I will say theta 0, 
theta 1, theta 1 is equal to 0 0.72, this is 0 0.72, then next calculation is done here that is uh, theta uh, 2 is equal to uh, 2 into 0.72, so on and so forth. This way it keeps on calculating, keeps on calculating, putting the space vector magnitude is always same. Magnitude of the space vector is always 194. So first calculation is 194 space vector at an angle 0 degree. What will be the timings T1, T2 and T0? T1 is the time for the active vector. T2 is the time for the, uh, T1 is the time for the first active vector. T2 is the time for the second active vector and T0 is the time for the null vector. <coughs> now, uh, so next calculation will be 194 at an angle 0.72 degrees, right? We will again calculating new calculation of T1, T2 and T0. This way we will keep on doing till the entire, uh, entire uh, trajectory of the uh, space vector traverses a circle, right? The, the, it has to traverse a circle, right? Okay, why circle? Because the space vector magnitude is always same. What is changing? Changing is the position of the space vector. We have understood that applying three phase sine wave to the photo terminal represents in the space vector plane of traversing uh, a uh, circle um, uh, at some uh, and, the, and, and tra traversing, a, traversing a circle, right? Uh, one cycle of, uh, uh, of the uh, power frequency is represented by uh, one completion of one cycle in the space vector plane, right? Uh, so, so this is what we have to, we have to do. We have to decide what are the values of T1, T2 and T0 for every, we have to keep on calculating. For example, you have to calculate how many times, how many, we have to calculate 500, uh, 500 steps in the case of a to generate a 20 hertz waveform. We have to calculate how many steps, we have to calculate 200 steps to generate a 50 hertz waveform. That is what we will have to do. So 50 hertz waveform we have to because then the then the then the theta or delta theta this is delta theta for what for for 50 uh, to for 20 hertz for 20 hertz. So delta theta delta theta for uh, 50 hertz will be how much? Just it will be more because uh, time is same and the uh, and the frequency is uh, 5 by 2 times. So it will be simply 0 0.72 into 2.5 point. 2 72 into 2.5 degrees. So it is 1.8 1. 1. degrees. Okay. So 1.8 1. 1. degrees. You have understood that uh, uh, that uh, this therefore space vector modulation implies the uh, calculations or calculation of the uh, times T1, T2, T0. And T1, T2, T0 represents T1 represents active vector 1, T1 represents what? T1 time represents active vector, active vector 1, T2 time represents, represents active time duration for uh, active, active okay, time duration for application of active vector 2 and T0 represents the time for which null vector has to be has to be applied in last class i have defined what is active vector what is this thing and what is uh, but one should not be too much worried that too many calculations because after some time you can see that uh, this there is a tremendous symmetry after every 60 degree the new sector <coughs> is uh, the calculations are symmetric with respect to the previous sector so in effect your uh, unique calculations uh, may be coming only up to uh, up to up to uh, for a uh, for a for uh, 60 degree duration only for 60 degree duration only you need to calculate it after that it is this if you have a stock I mean, if you kept it in uh, in some memory this calculation values of t1 and t2 you can just simply use them uh, but that is a minor issue that is a uh, kind of implementation issue, we should not give too much importance because we are understanding. What we, but we are seeing the basic nature of this uh, this space vector, which is a beautiful symmetric thing is coming. Okay, so uh, the space vectors that we see here are also also uh, interchangeable, right? Well, the space vectors are where uh, there was one space vector here, uh, one space vector here, right? 
another space vector is at this place right uh, another space vector is at what in this place another space vector is at this place another is at this place and another one is at this place so all 60 degree gap there is one space vector so when we are moving this thing in this plane in this way when we are moving here first 60 degree suppose we are moving here okay then this one is active vector one and this one is active vector <coughs> <coughs> this one is active vector two and this one is the null vector null vector is you already know that it is zero 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 or one 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 zero 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 implies all bottom switches on one 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 implies all top switches on right and this uh, 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 the, the, uh, so this is the uh, uh, this is the thing. So when you move to, so we define this one as sector one. That's why you have said it is as sector one. If we move to sector two, calculation wise, there is not much change because now look at it. Look, uh, listen to me carefully. In sector one, one is the active vector one, two is the active vector two, right? In sector two, two will be active vector one and one uh, and three will be, this is the vector three, this is the vector three, three will be active vector two. Right. So this way, if we replace the active vectors, we can go from one sector to another sector. And how do I know when we have to move from one sector to another sector? This is also very commonsensical and it will happen. It will almost automatically happen. Uh, one way of calculating of knowing when you are moving to this is because you are continuously incrementing theta. You are getting in, in this case, we have given an example where incrementing theta by 0.72 degrees. So the moment you cross this 0 0.72, 0 0.72, 0.72 the increment and cross over to more than 60 degree, you know that you have moved to the new sector. You can do that way. Another indirect way of doing it is that you can keep on calculating and at some point of time, you will see that T1 and T2 vectors are uh, uh, reaching their maximum possible values, right? That means the duty ratio is becoming one. That means, that, that means when it is, when the vector has to be here you see it has t1 t1 has has to become zero only t2 has to remain so that time you know that you have to move, move to a new sector initial phase initial phase you see that t1 will dominate if the vectors are very close to zero degree then t1 time will dominate right and as it as it moves closer to uh, as it increases in angle with respect to this reference uh, the space vector angle increases uh, the duration of the t, duration of t2 dominates over the duration of t1, right? That is natural, right? At certain point of time, you'll see that you don't need any t1. What it means? It means that you have you are now aligned to the space vector two, right? Then you know since one of them has become zero, I must move to a new sector, a new sector, and treat now vector two. This is the vector two, space vector two. This is the space vector one. The space vector two, I must now treat it as that new space vector one for the new sector, which is sector two, and treat vector three as the active vector two, and again start calculating, right? And calculations will produce exactly same amount of T1 and T2 as it was producing earlier with the reference being changed from here. This was the original reference, sector one reference, and if, if you have chosen this as the sector sector uh, sector uh, two reference uh, for angle, and you will see that now you don't say that theta is equal to 60 plus something. You again reset the theta to zero degree and start with 0 0.72, 0 0.72 uh, into two this way, right? Uh, so every 60 degree you are resetting your reference of the theta. Theta is again reset to zero, right? And then increment from zero to 60 degree. So you are going. 0 to 60 degree increment, entering a new sector, again 0 to 60 degree increment, entering a new sector, again 0 to 60 degree increment. This is the way you move around from sector 1 to sector 2 to sector 3 to sector 4, sector 5, sector 6, and again come back to sector 1. So this is the space vector <coughs> generation. So let me quickly show you some calculations, one example calculations. Let me Let me show you. Uh, one example calculation I'm so showing. 
so uh, i don't know what we did in the last class do we do calculation uh, i think we did some calculation yeah so this was the uh, formula we got it so uh, you remember the t1 and t2 formulas we got it and now if i put the numbers here what do i get i will i, I, will, I will just try to get some uh, values here right i let me calculate some values here but it's based on the formulas you have seen the formulas derived in the last class so let me uh, let me do it for this one i want to produce 194 volt at 30 degrees that means the vector is here uh, this is the basic reference so i am going and this is the sector 60 degree i have and this is the hexagons boundary i have produced uh, <clears throat> must understand that these are the extremes i am doing for 20 hertz so 20 hertz that's why the space vector magnitude is 194 so i am going 30 degree here i am produce sub vector of 194 the full one would have been <coughs> Uh, something like 400 and something 95 i think 495 yeah 4 uh, 194 is for 20 hertz mm. uh, what was that uh, 485 485 would have been the uh, the full one for 50 hertz uh, we are doing for 20 hertz so this is for the uh, one calculation where this theta is equal to 30 degree suppose we have to go do this uh, calculation uh, in this uh, in this case hmm. uh, don't <coughs> it may not be 30 degree exactly because here we are incrementing by 0.72 so it may be uh, uh, It may be 30.24, right? Uh, 0.72. If I go by increment of 0 0.72, 0 0.72, then 0.72 into 42 is equal to 30.24 degrees. So you may think that it is 30.24 degrees, right? It it 0.72 increment. I will, I will not let, uh, land up on the precise value of uh, 30 degrees, but I can, uh, I will go uh, to the value of uh, 30 point, uh, 30.24 because it has to be an integer multiple of 0 0.72 degrees. <clears throat> so if you calculate it now, please calculate if you have calculator. Uh, so T2 was, what was the formula? T2 was uh, V sin theta divided by vdc into root 3 by 2 into ts right okay so vd sin theta into vdc root 3 by 2 into ts so let me do it 194 into sin 30.24 divided by VDC VDC is 560 divided by root of 3 to 2. Yeah, so I am getting 20 point 20 point 24 microsecond. You understand TS is equal to 100 microsecond. 100 micro second this is vector active vector t1 this is active vector this is uh, let me call it v1 uh, duration is t1 uh, for which it is applied and this second one is active vector v2 the duration is t naught and this is v naught that is applied for the rest of the time rest of the time means ts minus t1 minus t2 that is the duration for which the v naught is applied v naught is the uh, null vector 
this is v1 active vector v1 v2 let us have phasor notations also vector notation also and v0 is just a point <coughs> it is applied being applied for this ts is the total switching period so t2 is easy to calculate so t2 we have calculated 194 this so what is t1 t1 is equal to uh, v cos theta uh, into ts minus v dc by 2 into ts by uh, vdc vdc so so it is how much <coughs> uh, uh, let me do it v cos theta 194 into cos of uh, 30.24 right okay One ninety four into cos thirty okay minus VDC by two into T two. Sorry, it is not T S, it is T two. Um, uh, T1 is equal to V cos theta into Ts minus uh, Vdc by 2 into T2 uh, divided by Vdc, right. Right, divided by Vdc, Achha. minus uh, Vdc by 2 is 280 into 20x minus 6, this Into 20.24 divided by 60. Yeah, got it. So it is coming out to be 19.88 uh, microsecond. Right. So uh, Ts minus T1 minus T2 that is equal to this plus. 20.24 uh, 100 minus 40.12 microsecond. So these are the time durations we have we can calculate. Calculate when we are trying to produce a vector of this value this is the v1 vector why are i am using the v vector this is v at an angle theta is this this is the vector vector i am trying to synthesize and i can calculate these things right so why after calculating these things i want to know how to how to switch these are the times they are merely times how do we ultimately generate switching pulses from this i understand conceptually that i have to apply a vector v1 for a duration of t1 that v1 itself means three switchings right three um, 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 on or off state in three uh, switching lets inverter has three switching lets okay r y and b so v1 represents a state of the 
uh, switching state of the inverter. That means it has to clearly define whether uh, R phase device, which device is on in the R phase, which device is on, top device is on or the bottom device is on, in the Y phase, which device is on and which in the B phase, which device is on. That will represent V1, right? That will represent V1. So we have to, uh, we, we get this thing. Uh, <clears throat> so we have already seen in the last class that V1 is the which combination is V1. Let me one more time show you what was the V1 in our last class. V1 is 1, 0, 0. You remember that. You should see that here. You see that it is V1 is equal to 1, 0, 0, which essence and that was 1, 1, 0. V2 is 1, 1, 0 and V1 is 1, 0, 0. <coughs> so we have to have a scheme where uh, 1, 0, 0 combination comes for T1 duration. So that we are trying to show you how we can go there. To go there, let us have a structure like this. Right, not good. Hope it's not good. Slope is not correct. Okay. Uh, so this is the, uh, this is a, uh, up, we call it up down counter, a counter which is up and down. Okay we will have to, uh, uh, we will, this will be continuing like this. This will be continuing like this cycle by cycle. And we will compare this counter with some three frozen values. One, two, and let us say three, three frozen values. And I will decide these values later. I, let me call it value one, value one, this is value two, this is value three. Okay, let us see what is happening when you compare like that. What, what pulses, based on this comparison, what pulses do we generate? Just see. So, uh, one pulse is generated based on this comparison. This comparison. So, we are generating one pulse like this. We are generating pulses like this and comparison is happening here. So the pulse is like, this is the starting point. This is the starting thing. This is the, this is the, this is, this is zero. This is, TS, this is the period TS. So first comparison has happened here, and this is this is the first comparison has happened here. Then based on the second comparison, Then based on the second comparison, this is the second pulse. Oh. This is the second pulse. Right. This is the second pulse. Based on the third comparison, 
there is another pulse. Let's say here. I don't know how to handle it. Right, this is the third pulse. <clears throat> Though it should have been drawn up, it would have been drawn good, uh, <coughs> up, but <coughs> you understand. So three levels have compared it and three such pulses have been, can be generated. <coughs> now let us understand what is it, what does it mean in a case of three phase inverter. If I consider this as the R device, let us say consider this as R device pulse. This I consider as Y device pulse and this I consider as B device pulse. So what is the initial state I am getting? All three are off. Zero means off. So all three are off. So I can call it zero, zero, zero. So this is a switching state and for duration let us call it duration is uh, T, this duration let me write it as T naught one not is implied for null state t not 1 by 2 the first null state is t not 1 by 2 why i am doing t not 1 by 2 because this will be symmetric the the this at the end also there is another t not 1 by 2 you see that you see that here also here also there is one t not 1 by 2 because this is an up down counter it has a symmetry of ts by 2 time symmetry of Ts by 2, this is Ts by 2, Ts by 2 times symmetry and uh, so left hand side one, uh, one state comes, similarly at the right hand side one another state comes. So uh, they are symmetric, it is a mirror image kind of thing. So therefore this if I define this time as T not 1 by 2, I have to define this time as also as a T not 1 by 2, right. So it is a state where both are um, all three uh, phases, devices of all the three phases are Y and B are off. So first switching state is I can write 0, 0, 0. That is what has produced and the duration is T naught 1 by 2. What is the second switching state subsequently? Subsequently we see that the R device is on. So I can call it 1. I can say that the B Y device is still off. So I 0 and the B device is still off, so it is also 0. So the second switching state is 0, 0, uh, sorry, 1, 0, 0, <coughs> 1, 1, 0, 0. Second switching state is 1, 0, 0. And how much duration? Let us define that duration, that duration, later we will give a name. name. So let, uh, let us define this duration as T x by 2, right? Why again by 2? Because there is a similar thing in the right hand side. Right hand side also, this one is T x by 2. So this one is also T x by 2, right? What is the third duration? Third switching state? Third switching state is, what is the third switch there? 1, R phase is still 1, Y phase is now turned into 1 and B phase is still 0. So that switching state is 1, 1, 0. So this is for what duration? This let us call it Ty by 2. This one was Tx by 2. Okay. This duration we call it Ty by 2. And similarly, this duration is also T y by 2 right <coughs> i hope you have observed already that 100 zero zero is representing what it is representing the space vector v1 and 110 one is representing what it is representing the space vector v2 you have observed i guess so <coughs> in this kind of modulator structure where there is up down counter and some values with which you are comparing this up down counter this up down counter you can <coughs> conceptually thinking that it is incrementing 
<coughs> in 0 to, to value 0 to 1, you can think that. That is just a scale, 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. That is up down counter. How much time it is taking to go to 1? It is taking time Ts by 2. A counter is what? It counts. So um, you, uh, you, you don't argue that counter can count as 1, 1, 1. Well, you, you give, a, uh, you give uh, this, make it 1 equivalent to 2 to the power 16. You can make it. It will be a 16 bit counter. You can make it 2 to the power 16 is equivalent to 1. And in accordingly, you can think that it is incrementing tick, 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 small, small incrementing and going up to this and coming up to this. So then these numbers that I am talking about 1, 2 and 3 values will also be whatever fractional value I was earlier considering multiplied by 2 to the power 16, right? And the basic idea doesn't change. So uh, not to go into the specifics that how many bits of, uh, how many counter has how many bits and etc, etc. I'm just uh, uh, it way I am representing the value, maximum value that the counter is reaching as 1. So it goes from 0 to 1. And the values that are being compared are fraction now, less than 1. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, okay, uh, so so we have got one zero zero implying the space vector one, one one zero implying the space vector two. In this way, we are saying that one zero zero is um, uh, is applied for t x by two, one one zero is applied for t y by two. I, I have to yet to define this t x and t y with respect to our calculations. So third fourth one fourth one is what fourth one if you look at it fourth one. Fourth one is what? Fourth space vector that it is generating. If you look at it now, where is the fourth vector? It has a symmetry uh, at the middle. Symmetry at the middle, right? So what is the fourth vector that it has generated? Fourth vector is one. All of them are one. One, 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 right? For how much duration? I will write it as, so fourth vector is one, 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 one and the duration is it is a null vector but of a different type so that's why the first name was t o one t suffix o o represent null vector zero zero is null t zero one why one because it was generated by a combination of zero switching state zero 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 here it is still effectively generating another null vector but the switching state is 1, 1, 1. Therefore, I am writing it as T O 2. Okay, null vector generated by a different combination. Null vector generated by first combination is 0, 0, 0. Null vector generated by the combination 1, 1, 1 and corresponding time is T naught 2 by 2. 2 is always showing that it is a symmetric thing. It's a, um, uh, left, uh, it is a mirrored symmetric thing. Uh, uh, left hand side <coughs> and the right hand side are mirror images of each other. So that is the way we see that we can create uh, with this kind of modulator structure, a up down counter and being compared with three predetermined values, we can create the two active vectors and two null vectors, right? So two null vectors is an extra extra advantage. We are not having just, we, it was enough to create one null vector because our requirement is to switch uh, active vector 1 for some duration, active vector 2 for some duration, and active vector 3 for some duration. So by comparison, and the durations we have already calculated, T1 is 19.88. So where is T1 coming in? Let us first make it make, understand T1. So T1, you can see that by comparison, T1 is this one, 1, 0, 0. So by comparison, this one is uh, T1 must be equal to Tx. Right? Because Tx by 2 and Tx by 2 twice it is coming. So by comparison, we can say that Tx is equal to T1 in this structure. Right? Tx is equal to T1 because it will have uh, actual modulator initially will have for, uh, uh, for Tx by 2 and then uh, the other side it will have another Tx by 2. So total it will have Tx time and Tx time must be equal to T1. Right? Uh, then similarly Ty is must be equal to t t2 right ty must be equal to t2 uh, <coughs> and then uh, by looking at it we can say that t naught must be equal to t t naught 1 plus t naught 2 right both of them 
put together must be equal to the duration of the uh, duration of the null vector that we have calculated. In our case, we have calculated that the null vector should be 59.87 microsecond and this T naught is equal to this uh, 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 T naught must be equal to the uh, equal to T naught 1 and T naught 2. So uniquely you do not need to find out uh, what should be T naught 1 by T naught 2 but normally they are made symmetric. So they make T naught 1 is equal to T naught 2 right. Uh, uh, so uh, this is the way um, one can determine the things. Uh, so what I have to determine now? Uh, this counter is free running counter, it is all the time running. I need to only determine what should be my 1 value, what should be my 2 value and what should be my 3 value. So let us calculate, let us understand that what should be my 1 value, what should be my, by simple um, uh, proportionality we can find out that I my t1 value is equal to proportional to t naught 1 by ts right <coughs> this one value what is the what is that equivalent value of this uh, uh, let me uh, show you what i am meaning uh, and the slope is like this it is going how much it is by going from 0 to 1 in time what ts by 2 ts by 2 and this is this first one first comparison and the first comparison is showing a time value of what t naught T not 1 by 2. So, uh, so it goes uh, 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 in Ts by 2 time it become, becomes 1. So, in uh, T not by 1 by 2 should corresponds to what value? So, it corresponds to 2 by Ts into T not 1 by 2. So, the comparison value that you need, the first comparison value, first comparison value uh, is uh, is is equal to is corresponds to uh, this this comes t naught 1 by t s this you have to then calculate so t naught 1 you have already known t 1 t naught 1 is what t naught 1 is equal to t naught by 2 right from that you can get the first comparison value first comparison value is which you have represented metaphorically as this one okay so this will be this if it is, if Ts is represented by a time of 2 to the power 15 or so, then 1 will be this by this into 2 to the power 15. So that will be the numerical value when you are implementing in a digital system. In a digital system, Ts may represent a numerical, because it's a counter, may represent a 2 to the power 16. A 16 bit counter will represent this, this as 2 to the power 16. So T naught 1 by t, uh, this thing will be then simply by uh, multiplying it by 2 to the power 16 you will get the value, right? Uh, <coughs> first you calculate the ratio and then you multiply it by the uh, uh, by the value, right? So what will be the T2? Uh, what will be the second value? So second value is comparison level is what? You can see that the second comparison level is happening at what? It is happening at, it has to take care of uh, T naught 1 by 2 plus Tx by 2. So it is corresponding to, this corresponds to T naught 1 by 2 plus uh, T x, uh, T x is, I have seen that T x is always e already equal to T 1, T 1 by 2. So what will be the, uh, the corresponding, <coughs> what will be the corresponding number? <coughs> it will be corresponding number will be T naught 1 plus T x by T s. If you want to multiply by a factor, then to do by 16, okay. So this corresponds to this this number corresponds to t naught 1 into t not tx tx is equal to we already know it is equal to 1 so tx is equal to better y will be will be to correct write it as uh, it is a t1 similarly the third comparison level will be equal to t naught 1 by 2 plus t1 by 2 plus t2 by 2 so it is equal to t naught 1 plus t1 plus t2 by Yes. Okay. These are the three labels we have to use for comparison. So this unit is called uh, a counter comparator unit. Counter comparator unit. Counter is producing the uh, triangular wave. Okay. Up down counter. This is called up down counter. This counting up. This is going to the maximum value, and then from that maximum value, it is counting down. 
it is going from 0 let us say 16 bit counter going from 0 to counting up to 2 to the power 16 and then from 2 to the power 16 it is counting down to 0 and there are there is a comparator three comparators in fact not one comparator because it is a three phase system using the same counter but using three com uh, three comparators and the three comparators at after comparison are generating the switching pulses that you will use at the gate of the uh, semiconductor gate of the igbt so that gate pulses are basically generated from this okay in a control level after that gate driver will amplify it but before that the actual control pulses are generated by the uh, uh, by the counter comparator unit we call it counter comparator unit which compares these three values and this is called uh, sometimes comparator comparator counter counter unit every dsp has this uh, which does motor control has got this internal hardware, these things. So you just calculate this T1, T2, and T0, and accordingly these values 1, 2, 3, you load. You load to the comparator registers. You load, load comparator registers with these values. Comparator registers with 1, 2, and 3 values based on your calculations of T1, T2, and T0, and correspondingly they generate switching pulses. Switching pulses. Switching pulses for the of the three-phase inverter. Three-phase inverter. You understand that if I know the top device status, okay, I know the bottom device. That is just by um, complementing it. So, the essential information is whether it is 0, 0, 0, or 1, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, 1. At what instant of time they have to move from one state to another state? And which is happening naturally. You are, see, you, you, the moment it is comparison is going on, you are doing the next calculation. When this comparison would be, you have calculated prior. Prior, you have calculated. Before starting the counter, suppose you know the values of 1, 2, and 3. And you have loaded it. Load, how do you load? Loading means if you know the digital programming, there are some registers. You just dump those values in that registers. And registers hold that value. And there is a comparator unit. The comparator unit, one end is, one end is coming from the counter. Counter. Counter, counter, which is incrementing, which is incrementing, decrementing. Another is the end is from register. 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 Comparator register. And this is actual comparison in it. Comparison. Comparator. And final output is the switching pulses. So this is how it is happening. It is you have loaded it, calculated it, and loaded to the register. You counter once you start, counter is free running. You don't have to do anything. Initially, while initialization, you initialize it as a counter of 16 bit and you set the counter mode as up down counter mode. Then it is free running. You don't have to interfere with it. And but what you have to do is every 0.72 degrees, you have to load new new values to these registers, these three registers in this case. So all the DSPs are provided with this basic hardware internally built up uh, so that you can only calculate and put the values. And calculation you have to do because uh, you need to uh, go, you need to change the vector position, space vector position. Uh, as you are generating the three phase terminal voltages, you need to change the space equivalent space vector uh, uh, um, voltages. Okay, and the magnitude always remains same. And only thing that is changing is uh, uh, changing is the angle when you are generating something of some frequency. Okay, when you go to another frequency, when the motor has to run at a different frequency, obviously you have to change the value of the space vector as well as the uh, after changing the value of the space vector, you have to make it traverse a circle in a circle, right? Uh, and accordingly, you have to calculate the new values of theta when the uh, magnitude has frozen based on the V by F ratio. Okay, magnitude of the space vector has frozen, uh, has been determined based on the V by F calculation. So this is how uh, in implementation space vector will be there in the uh, in the hardware in the digital hardware. Hope I have uh, got you some idea. Uh, okay, I will stop here. Any questions?
uh, if you, you can ask now also if you have one one question also <coughs> If you have a question, please ask. Okay then I will I will stop recording